Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about the top three things I wish I'd known before starting a software engineering career. Uh, just a quick note, so I know I didn't post uh, this past Sunday, which is when I, I try to post on Sunday and Wednesdays. Uh, I had a friend in town, a really good friend, and we ended up hanging up all weekend. He was at my place, so it was kind of hard to record, so apologies for that, but I'll be back on a regular cadence now. So let's get started. So the first thing is to focus on the business value that what you're working on is going to contribute to. So, you know, as software engineers, there is initially in the beginning, because you might come from a computer science background, um, and also as junior engineers, you kind of do focus on coding a lot. But at the end of the day, don't just code for the sake of coding, right? Like in the beginning, you'll be coding just to practice getting your fundamentals down, but still try to keep in mind that whatever you're trying to accomplish, whatever task that you, or project that you're tasked to complete has a business impact. And that business impact at the end of the day is to either ultimately save the company money or to generate the company money. So when you do a task, like try to understand what business impact does this have? And if you put yourself in that mindset, you'll focus more on how to s solve this problem, how to, you know, deliver a solution. And that solution might not include code. And honestly, like whenever you code, code is inherently something you have to maintain and something that will go away in a few years, unfortunately. Um, right. Like usually be, unless you're writing some code that is more lower on a stack and more fundamental, um, the usually if you're writing, when you're writing code for like a product, it is something that will change and evolve over time. So code by itself is, you know, something you got to maintain and something that if you can avoid coding and instead deliver your solution another way, that would be ideal. So definitely focus on the business impact. Like what am I trying to do? First of all, will code solve this? Can I solve this in a non-coding way? And if so, go that way, you know, try for the easiest uh, solution. But if coding is necessary, then, you know, build out with code and try to code your, thing well but keep in mind like this is you know what you're trying to do is ultimately to save or make the mo company money and if you put yourself in that mindset it'll give you kind of like a zoomed out um bird's eye view of what you're doing so definitely keep that in mind when you're starting off the second thing i would say is also something that's extensible for life in general as a you know like a life principle but is to feel comf feel comfortable being uncomfortable so Definitely stretch yourself, definitely put yourself in projects, tasks that where you feel uncomfortable, you feel like you're learning, right? Now there's a caveat to this because you don't want to overwhelm yourself. Like there's definitely a sweet spot of feeling uncomfortable, but if you feel overwhelmed, you might burn out. So you kind of have to push yourself to find where that sweet spot is. And in the beginning, you're probably going to feel overly stressed. Like, oh, this is just way too much. but. And I think it's okay because over time you'll kind of develop, okay, this is where my sweet spot is of the kind of um, the, the anxiety or the stress that I feel is, is uh, something that I can tolerate and to something that I can grow through. Now, you don't want to feel complacent because once you feel complacent, you get kind of stuck in that mode. And that's a mode where you can't really grow yourself. You can't really grow yourself career-wise, uh, skill-wise, and, and even personal-wise because you kind of just stagnate as like a human being, right? Because after all, you're spending eight plus hours per day at this job. So you want to be able to use your resource, mental resources and push yourself to grow. And, you know, it's, again, like it's so easy to get stuck in like a pattern. And to, to be honest, in my first couple first few years of software engineering, you know, for other reasons as well, I felt like I was just kind of in that mode of, you know, okay, this is what I'm comfortable with. I'm just going to do this. Um, uh, and I did a lot of like coding, coding focused tasks and you know, that's okay. But you know, at the end of the day, there's also other stuff on top of coding tasks, like project management, leading projects, um, communicating with different stakeholders. Like those are all things that were a little bit uncomfortable for me, but for some reason I just ended up being like just, just coding a lot. And of course within coding itself, there are challenges and you should always push yourself to, um, learn more and like be uncomfortable within like the coding domain, because that's how you learn new technologies. That's how you learn, you know, how to code well, but you know, regardless if it's coding or it's project management, like always push yourself to be, um, uncomfortable right 
And it's okay if you feel uncomfortable. It's okay if you feel overwhelmed. Like you kind of have to dial it back, but just do not be in a situation where you're feeling complacent, right? Like for a lot of us, like especially especially if you're on a younger side, um, you want to take this chance in your 20s and 30s to grow as much as you can. Um, I can understand if you're, you know, maybe a little bit uh, older, you want to slow down a little bit, you know, your family life, all of that. But, um, you know, that's understandable. But as a younger person, you have fewer obligations. So definitely take that time to kind of maximize your growth as a person. And, you know, uh, it'll be worth it at the end because, you know, um, you know, if you end up being going somewhere else rather than tech, you can take those skills and take that paradigm, that mindset of learning and growing to wherever else you go. So this is very much a meta skill. And I think it's very important to um, always have, always be able to, you know, put yourself in that position of uh, being able to grow. And just a quick note about putting yourself in a position of growth. By definition, when you're in that position, you're going to feel uncomfortable, right? Because you're learning, you're extending yourself, like you're getting out of your comfort zone. And a lot of times, I remember I was like this at the beginning, um, when you're in that position, you feel kind of, you know, maybe you're not smart enough, maybe you're not talented, skilled, whatever. Your mind goes to like some pretty crazy places and that can actually that can have a de detrimental effect where you can kind of, oh, sh oh no, it's not worth it. I'm just going to shy away from it and just go back to a place of comfort. But that's what you need to kind of fight mentally, right? Like it's okay to feel like you're not smart enough or you're not skilled enough because in your mind, you need to shift that to a position of growth. Like I'm not smart enough, blah, blah, yet, right? And you'll get there, hence the yet part. So, you know, it, it's tough because, you know, by definition, it's uncomfortable and you want to just escape that. But put yourself in that and know that it's going to get better and you're getting and you're growing and you're getting better. And know that, you know, your time will come when, you know, you look back and you say, oh, I've, I've, I'm glad I did that. You know, look where I am now compared to where I was then. You know, I, and you kind of remember that you felt that way so that in the future when you're in this um kind of stressful situation again, then you know I can, first of all, you know you have the confidence that you can make it through, and second of all, you, um, you know, you know as a real result of your previous experiences that this is something that will lead to uh, an, an inevitable a positive outcome. And the last thing I would say is when it comes to growing and learning and, you know, getting promoted through your career, um, definitely have concrete goals, right? And this is something that you can work with your manager on, right? Like some people feel like their manager is always oh, their boss is a really intimidating feature or sorry, intimidating uh, person. But know that your manager is on your side. Your manager wants you to grow. Your manager wants you to work on these projects and to contribute. And you know, not pe people aren't don't come, you know, stagnant. They don't come like fully developed. And so. Um, don't be afraid to talk to your manager about how, what can I do to number one, grow? What can I do to get promoted? You know, you know, promotion for a lot of people is a good target because that kind of forces you in a mindset of, okay, I need to deliver the X, Y, and Z. I need to get out of my comfort zone. And that way I can get myself ready for the next level. So I think it's important to have that conversation early on with yourself first and then with your manager, obviously, because, um, uh, they'll give you kind of like a concrete checklist hopefully, of things that you can work on um, and projects that you can deliver. And also that shows that you have the hunger and the thirst and the ambition to do these big projects. Because a lot of managers, they, they appreciate that. They want people who are hungry. They want people who are willing to go, go the extra mile to improve themselves and hence improve the project or you know deliver the project that, 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 that they're working on. So um, you know, definitely have, don't, don't just like kind of go day by day without having you know, a concrete checklist of things to do, right? Like I'm gonna do this project and this project and I'm gonna do this and this to grow, right? Um, obviously, obviously, like I mentioned in a previous point, um, the growth mindset is very important, but that's something that's more abstract, right? That's not as tangible as having like a concrete checklist. So, um, you know, work with your manager, work with your leadership to have things that you can tackle that will kind of put you in a position to both grow and both make an impact once you deliver those features. All right, guys, so that's the top three things I wish I'd known before starting a software engineering career or, you know, I wish I'd known when I began when I was earlier on. 
And you know, this is definitely not an exhaustive list. So in a future video, I'll do an updated version of this or add on some other things that, that I can think of. Um, but for now, you know, I hope that was helpful. You know, definitely take those things to heart. You know, I know each person is different. Each engineer is different. Um, each person's natural skills or talents that they come with before entering the software engineering field is different. So they might have different challenges or things that they wish they had known earlier. But those are mine. I hope they were helpful. So, you know, definitely leave a comment. Um, I will respond to you in the comment box below. And yeah, see you guys later.